Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Anybody else? Any other prayer requests? Okay. We're going to have the, some ladies come up and lay hands on you and pray the prayer of faith. Anybody else? Mike or Dan? And his, what's his name again, Dan? Jamie Belding. Jamie, okay. Anyone else? This program is conference coordinated. Are we going to... Yeah. Okay, praise the Lord. It's going to be late there. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's all stand for a moment. And I'd like the ladies, if you would, to go uh, while we're praying, I'm going to lay hands on Carol for her hip. And let's believe God for a... For a supernatural touch from the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Father, we just thank you right now for your promise of healing. We declare that in Jesus' name. Right now, Lord, we rebuke any pain, discomfort, any abnormality in her hip. We release our faith right now for a complete and total manifestation of her healing. You said that by your stripes we were healed, Lord. We claim that promise right now. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Praise God. For Jamie, we thank you, Lord, that you're moving in his life. We trust you, Lord, to meet the, the need perfectly in his situation and circumstance. You know the, the, the real need and the, and the only answer that will resolve that situation. We release our faith for that right now, Lord. We believe, Lord, that you're moving and working in that situation right this minute. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. We pray for that Bible study, Lord, that you would touch each and every person there, open their hearts to the Word of God, help them to experience the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives, show them your glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord, for the Women's Conference, we ask, Lord, that you would just show yourself mighty in these services. Lord, just uh, show up and show out in Jesus' name. Lord, touch these women, reveal yourself to them, have your perfect will be done in their lives, Lord, bring many to a deeper and, and clearer understanding of Christ and your will for their life. We thank you, Lord, for empowering women in Jesus' name, Lord, by your spirit, Lord. We ask this all in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, and we declare it so, even as you have spoken in Jesus' name. And everybody said, praise the Lord. Amen, amen. God bless all of you. Praise the Lord. Dan, would you come take up the offering? Oh, wait a minute. Never mind, Dan. I forgot you got that boot. I'll take advantage of you here. Okay. I'll be happy to. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to sow into your kingdom, into this local body. We just pray, Lord, that you would uh, take this seed that's sown tonight, Lord, and multiply it. Give it back. Ten, hundred thousandfold, Lord, just show yourself faithful, Lord, to those who give in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give. Hallelujah.
Praise God. Praise God. Let's worship the Lord right now. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just bless you. We thank you, Lord, for your love, for your goodness, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for never leaving us or forsaking us, Lord. For reminding us, Lord, of your goodness and your grace. You are a good God. We love you, Lord. We bless your name. And thank you, Lord, for every good and perfect gift that comes from you. Thank you, Lord, that you are blessing us and that you even give us your faith to receive the blessings that you have for us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to stay focused on you that we might see the glory of God in our lives and the blessings of God upon us. We know that's your will, Lord, and by faith we receive it right now in Jesus' name. And everybody said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God bless all of you for being here tonight, in spite of the threats. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. That devil is a liar. Praise God. Uh, we're believing for uh, this thing all to hit Nebraska. <laughs> Just kidding. Praise the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord. It's all good in Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Well, I'm going to be very brief tonight, so I know the women are trying to work out some last-minute details, but if they're coming, come on. If they're not, we're going to move on without you. Praise the Lord. You know, I uh, the reason I'm saying this, and I... I mentioned this to Mike and Mike earlier. That sounds like a uh, vaudeville team, but they might make it there, praise the Lord. But we've all been talking about and confessing and professing praise the Lord. I'm just eavesdropping, so don't mind me. But we've all been talking about 2017 being a different thing, something new. God wants to do something, wants to make some changes, wants to uh, move in, in ways that we haven't experienced. And I believe that to be the case. I really do. But I also think that because of that, maybe we need to make some changes. Amen. Now, the components that we have for a church service are good. They're, they're needful. So we need to have worship, obviously. We've got to have the Word of God. We need congregational uh, interaction and, and connection and involvement. We want you to feel empowered, that you have the ability to interact, to pray for one another, to, do, to prophesy, to do all the things that we know the Word of God tells us we're supposed to do. So that's a good thing. Obviously, prayer, we got to have it. You know, that's just what a church is all about. And, of course, you got to have an offering because otherwise the lights wouldn't be on here. We'd all have to bring candles. There'd be a candlelight service every time. But. So those things are all needful. But at the same time, we can get so locked into the way that we do those things that even as unique as our services are, it just becomes a ritual. I was telling Mike and, and Mike that earlier, I said, you know, we just as well print out a hand out like you have in a Catholic church and just come in and follow the, you know, when to stand, when to kneel, when to, you know, say hallelujah or praise the Lord because it's almost gotten to the point where we've become so repetitious that it's gotten stale. And the bigger issue there is that it doesn't give God the opportunity to move when he may want to move because we're looking to the next step that we got to take. Now for me personally, Sunday was just a a freak show, not not the not what was going on, but within me because I knew we had one, two, three, at least four visitors plus a couple of kids. And I don't know that these people are saved. I I don't know them. They're visitors. So I'm assuming at least one or two of them may not be saved. 
don't know the Lord. So I'm thinking all through the service, I'm thinking we've got to reach these, we've got to give them an opportunity to receive Christ. But we're going through the steps, and the one gentleman got up and went out once and then came back, and I'm thinking, oh, wow, we're liable to lose them. You know, they're going to get up and bail on us before we have an opportunity to introduce them to Jesus. Am I making any sense to anybody? I mean, so what I'm saying is this. The components of what we do are great, but we need to, we need to freshen up. We need to do, do it differently so that we're not so locked in to what the next step is in the program that we are unable to, to be sensitive to the particular circumstances that we're involved with. Every Sunday can be different. You know what I'm saying? Just like last Sunday was different. You know, Mike mentioned, it's Easter. These people may not, they, they may not be in church again for another year. Right? If they come at all. Because a lot of people, we know, they only go to church on Easter or Christmas. So it was an opportunity that I didn't want to miss, and I know the Holy Spirit didn't want to miss it. So what I'm saying is this. We want, this is not a, this is not a correction against anybody. It's me. I'm, you know, we initiated this stuff, and I, I'm not against any of it. It's just that when we get so dogmatic about it, we, we're not able to actually flow in the Holy Ghost. And that's what we're after. So we're going to start switching things around. And every week it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to have the components will be there, but we'll just do it in a different order. We're just going to break things up and it'll be uncomfortable. It'll be a little awkward. But hey, we can handle awkward, right? Amen. We want God to move. So if in any specific area God moves, we can focus on that area. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because if, if we move stuff around, then it is, we're not as likely to think, we've got to get there because that's what's next, right? And if we're not really, you know, you may not even be sure what's next. In fact, you probably won't because we'll just know it from week to week. We'll just be doing it from week to week. So it may be a little uncomfortable in the sense that you can't just sit back and say, well, now next we do this. But maybe that's what we need. You know, maybe we need to be kind of, do something fresh. Stir the pot. As, you know, that's it, Mike. Kind of stir things up a little bit and give God an opportunity to minister wherever he wants to in the service. Yes. Okay? Does that make sense to, to you all? Nope. Yeah. I want it to be fresh. Amen. And, and, uh, and that means for it to be that way, it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable for us. But think, a visitor comes, they don't know. Unless they come two weeks in a row, they won't know if, if that's the way we always do it, right? And if they do come, it was like Mike was talking about a church he went to when he was stationed in a different part of the states. And uh, every time he'd go, it was different. And at first he thought, well, this isn't right. And then he thought, well, maybe it is right. Maybe this is a good thing. Because it leaves you anticipating what's coming next. What, what Maybe what's God going to do next? You see what I'm saying? And so I think it's good for us as a church, as a congregation, but I also think it'll be good for visitors because I'm hoping it'll make us more, more aware and more sensitive to what's going on in the service instead of, you know, what, you know, when it becomes repetitious, it's just like taking a course in school. You know, you know what's coming, you know what's going to be said, and you just sit there and, zoom, you know, it just goes right through you or over your head and past you. But if you're not totally aware of everything that's going to take place, it keeps you a little more alert. It, it, it causes you to be a little bit more aware of your surroundings and of the circumstances. Amen? Amen? So that's our intention. So you come in Sunday and everything's not the way it is. Don't freak out and think, you know, the pastor's lost his mind. You're too late about that because that was a long time ago. Glory. Praise the Lord. But, but we're, we're, what we're doing is we're simply trying to make ourselves more open to the Holy Spirit. And it's going to take a little effort on all of our parts to, to make that happen, right? right? So that's what we're after more than anything else, to be more sensitive so that when, if the Spirit begins to move, a lot of times it's, it's not like a major wave when it starts. It's just a little ripple. But maybe we'll be more sensitive to that ripple if we're not so locked into what the next step is that we got to move on to, right? right? That's my whole point anyway. That's what I'm, that's what I'm believing. And I believe it's the Lord because, as I said, if God's wanting to do something new, if he's wanting to do something different, 
maybe we ought to get on the same page with him because if we're going to continue doing everything the same way and he's wanting to do something different, we could have a problem there connecting, right? Amen. So that's the motive behind this. Not a, this is not a correction of anybody or any part of it. If there's anything that needs to be corrected, it would just be me because we instigated and instituted this. <laughs> Instigation might have been a better word. <laughs> but my point is, you know, we, when we started doing this, this was very unique. It was very unusual. You'd come to this church, and it was do, they, we were doing stuff that nobody else was doing. Well, we're still doing stuff that nobody else is doing, but we're just doing it week after week after week the same way. And here's my point. I was just I looked up a couple of things today just because that was in, on my mind. I felt like it was the Holy Spirit talking to me last Sunday that kind of initiated this whole thing. But Amen. a religion is defined in Strong's Concordance as just a ceremonial observance. That's what religion is. We don't want a ceremonial observance. We want a God awareness. That's what we're after. That's what we're all after. We don't want to just have a ritual going on here. And the word religion, when I looked it up in Webster's Dictionary, it's an even freakier definition. It comes from a Latin word that is called religare, which means to bind back. Now, I don't know about you, but we were supposed to have been set free when we came to Jesus. So we get set free, and then we start operating in religion, and we get rebound. Come on. So the Holy Spirit can't move. And here's my point. If you do the same thing long enough, it becomes a religious activity. It's no longer a Holy Ghost sensitive thing. It's just a religious observance. It's just a rebinding. Amen? You see what I'm saying? It's just pulling you back into a, a thing where God has very little opportunity to move and operate. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're after. That's the most important thing. That will touch the life, not only of us, and we, we all need it, but even more importantly for the visitor that comes in can be, God can work with them and operate in them and on them, and we can cooperate with that spirit as it does it. Amen? Amen. So that's what I'm talking about. Were those people saved? I don't know. But that was what was on my heart the entire service. I was basically oblivious to everything else that was going on. I was just trying to figure out how can we get... Not necessarily an altar call, but at least give them an opportunity to acknowledge Christ. Exactly. If they're not saved, let's not let them leave here disconnected the way they came. Amen? Otherwise, we're just a religious service. You know what I'm saying? We're, this is about bringing people to Christ, including us. Okay? So that's, that's, the, that's our motivation. And again, this is not a, a correction on anybody or any aspect of our services because... I'm all in on this. I mean, I, I still want all the components. It's just that we want to stir it up. We want to change it. And it's going to be changed every week. We're going to do, something, we're going to do it differently. We'll do it in a different, in a different you know, in a different, uh, what, what's my word, uh, order, in a different order. And that way it gives us an opportunity. If we want to plug in something altogether different, something we haven't done before, we can do it. And it's not quite as mind-blowing, if you will, to some people who are just really more comfortable with everything being the same because as God begins to lead us it's going to open up opportunities for us to do different things and give God an opportunity to minister in ways that he doesn't get the opportunity now because we've got him locked into these four or five steps you know so that's my point and that's the motive behind this and I think it'll keep it fresh again it keeps us a little bit more conscious of what's going on around us if we're not totally sure what's going to happen next amen it makes you more alert and more aware of your circumstances right I mean, if you just come in and you know what it's going to be, if there's a certain part you're not as interested in as the other part, you just block it out. You just go, oh, well, pretty soon they'll be to this. You know, pretty soon they'll be to the, the, this part of it and that part of it. And in the meantime, I'll just ch check out here. Well, if you don't know what's next, yeah. amen, you'll either be frightened and want to be watching out for yourself to protect yourself, or you'll be excited about, man, yeah, what's, what's God going to do next? Well, we gave them an opportunity. I mean, we gave them, we, fortunately, they didn't bail on us before we had the opportunity to give them uh, a, a prayer to, to, to pray uh, for Christ. But that's the motive. I mean, that's the point. We, we need to be ministered to. All of us do. We all want, but we also need to minister. Yeah. And when we've got visitors here, 
and we are so locked into our routine, they don't know what's going on. They just came because it's Easter. They may not have a spiritual sensitivity in their body, you know, in their at all. It's Easter, so they came to Sunday school. They came to church because it's Easter. That's what a lot of people do. Amen. And we don't want to miss the opportunity, whatever day that is, whether it's Easter or whenever, when we get a visitor, we want to be able to minister Christ to them, really be able to make it possible for them to make that connection. Yes. So that's, that's what I'm saying. And what I'm kind of what the Holy Spirit was saying to me is that we've gotten just as religious in our routine. Yeah. It's just a different routine. Yeah. And so we're going to change the routine. And it'll be uncomfortable. Anybody who knows me, I am a creature of habit. But I'm willing to throw that to the wind because I think God does want to do something different in 2017. We've heard the pro prophetic words come forth. And if we don't get on board with that, this is a way of us saying, Lord, we believe this. We're not just speaking a prophetic word. We're going we're gonna to walk in it. We're going to believe it. We're going to begin to step out in faith and give you the opportunity then to do this new thing. makes it difficult for God to do a new thing if we want to keep doing the old thing. Amen. So that's what, that's what we're really after. So change has to come so that we don't establish just another routine. We want God's manifestation. Amen. And that's the most important thing of all. We've already proven, I think, to the average person that walks through these doors and even to all of us, that we're not that concerned about what church is supposed to look like. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We're just, we want to really, really have church. Yeah. And again, even as unique as the things are that we do, if that's what we just keep doing it and doing it and doing it, it's not unique anymore. It just becomes another religious activity, just a different religious activity. So that's, that's the motive behind this. So... Get ready, praise the Lord. And we're just going to start, as Mike said, stir the pot. We're just going to change it around from week to week. And we're going to do everything we can to make it unique. And so that it'll be fresh for you and for any visitor that comes. It'll just be a, a different experience, amen, and give God an opportunity. So that if God, be, if, if the Spirit begins to move in the, in the preaching of the Word, we can respond right then. If He starts to move in, in prayer when we're having the, the, our prayer time, then we can move right then. And if, if it's during worship, then we can move right then and, and, and allow the Holy Spirit to minister without thinking, we got to get, the, I know what the next step is, and we need to get there. Yeah, right. Okay? So that's, that's the motive behind all of this. Amen. So, now, I said I was going to be brief, and I really am. But I just want to, I, I just want to, I'm not going to really preach a message tonight. I just want to tell you a little story. But I do, I'll, I'll give you a couple of scriptures here just because it's church. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3. And I'd like to read verses 3 through 6. Proverbs 3, verses 3 through 6. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Praise the Lord. And then, Mike, I'd like to read John chapter 13, verses 33 through 35. John 13, 33 through, 30, through 35. Uh, before I read this, I'll just say without going into any detail, Sally and I had a conversation here a couple weeks ago, or a week ago, whenever it was, I don't remember. But, and I really think, although I didn't go into all this with her, I just I, I did tell her s certain aspects of it, but without going into any depth, I feel like what God, one of the things God is dealing with me about is love. And I don't mean that in a romantic way. I preached one of the touch and feely messages. Praise, praise the Lord, Suzanne, thank you. <laughs> a couple weeks ago. Because I really do feel like God is, is dealing with me about this. Because God is love. And sometimes you can get so locked into the, the, the kind of the revelation and revelatory uh, value of the word that you miss the overriding theme of all of it. 
and that's love. And God has really put this on my heart, to love everybody. Now, that doesn't mean you've got to like them. It doesn't mean you've got to like everything they do. It doesn't mean any of that. But it does, it's a choice, and that's what I told Sally. This wasn't about her and I. It was just about stuff. And I said, I'm, just, I'm making the decision, and I'm going to love. And I'm not going to let me get in the way of God. I'm not going to let me and my feelings get in the way of what God's really wanting to do. Amen. That's what the devil is after. And he'll use anything, any means by which to manipulate us and get us in the flesh to where he can't move. Amen. Amen. So little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me as I said unto the Jews. Whether I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. Now this may sound crazy, but it's just the way the Lord spoke to me. But about almost a month now, the 22nd of last month, our dog died, Nelson. He was probably the gentlest, sweetest, half-breed dog that anybody could ever have. Amen. He, was. he was part um, Labrador and part uh, Irish Setter. So he had the face of a lab, but he kind of had the hair and the body of an Irish Setter, only it was black. But he really was from the time we got him. And we got him, we adopted him from a woman who used to go to this church. Her mother had him in town. And she was a hoarder. And so she'd have him in the house and he was cooped up in there and he couldn't take it. So when she'd put him out in the yard, she had him chained to the clothesline. And he would bark and carry on because of the sirens. It was in, in town here in Des Moines. So this young lady who was coming to the church at the time asked me, if I had a chainsaw, if I could go over there and help clean up her mom's yard because she had vines growing up into the fence and of her neighbor and she had trees that were hanging over into their yard and they were complaining. And So my oldest son and I went over and cut down a few trees and cleaned up all the vines and stuff that were growing through the fence, cleaned the property up a little bit for her so she could get the neighbors off her back. And while we were there, Nelson was outside on the thing and every time I'd go by, he'd jump on me and he wanted to play. And he, you know, he was an adult dog, but he was just, it's still a, relatively young dog, but full grown. And so I'd pat him on the head and, you know, I didn't know his name or anything, but I'd just play around with him a little bit, you know, and then I'd go on to the next tree or cutting it up or whatever it was we had going on. So we got ready to leave after we'd gotten everything done and, you know, got our equipment back in the pickups and we're getting ready to leave. And the, the girl came out and asked me if I wanted to take the dog. Well, now, I wasn't looking for a dog to be honest with you. And I said, well, why? And she said, because mom can't take care of him. And he's barking and the neighbors are complaining because when, she, when, he's out, when he's inside, he can't stand being inside. He's hyper. He wants outside. When he gets outside, the sirens and all the traffic and stuff make him nervous. And so he barks and the neighbors call the cops because he's disturbing the peace and so forth. So I said, okay, I'll take him. I didn't call Sally ahead of time. I just took him, praise the Lord. Well, anyway, we've got like two and about two and a half acres of and so we put, I had an invisible fence put in and uh, had him trained so he wouldn't get out. And he never tried to. He wandered off. He only wandered into the neighbor's yard one time, and that was because I forgot to change the battery in his collar. <laughs> but he wasn't a roamer. You know, he wasn't a trying to get out or anything. But he just loved that open space. And when I first got him, I'd be out there messing around. He'd be wandering around. And I'd just clap my hands, and he'd take off like somebody had shot at him. And he'd run the whole perimeter of the yard, and then he'd come back to me and jump on me. Wow. And I'd hold him down on the ground, I'd roll around with him a little bit, and then get up, and as soon as I clap my hands, bam, and he'd take off again. He was just so freaked out about the space, having so much space to play in and to run in and to not have anything. So, Amen. And he was just a good dog. He never, we got little grandkids. I mean, they'd hang on him, ride on him. He'd never even growl or nip or anything else. In fact, the weekend before he died, the grandkids were over there. He was already sick. He'd lost a lot of weight. Everywhere they played, he'd go and, <laughs> this is crazy, it's a dog, but he'd go, he'd go there and lay down right where we're playing. Yeah, yeah. 
He couldn't play with them. He was too worn out and weak, but he wanted to be where they were anyway. So as soon as they'd move off to play in the swing sets over here or whatever, then he'd go over there and he'd lay over there. And then he got in the, the uh, whatever that other swing is, and, uh, and then they'd go and he'd come over and lay there. He just wanted to be wherever everybody was, you know. So here's the deal. For years, there's a neighbor dog, not actually a neighbor, they live about, as the crow flies, probably two and a half miles or so away. And it was a husky. I think that's what it is, a white Siberian, Siberian husky. Beautiful dog, white, mm -hmm. female named Angel. And for some reason, she came to see Nelson one day. This is just a year or so after we'd gotten him. And they connected right away in all sorts of ways. But they were, <laughs> you know. But they did. They just, but it wasn't just that. They played together. They lay out there in the sun. They get under the tree together. They just then they get up and they run around and play with each other and you know chase each other around the yard and jump up and down, and carry on. And so, in fact, she stayed one time. We didn't know who she who she belonged to at the time. So I you know fed her and we put her in the dog run just so she wouldn't run out and get run over on the roads. And the, their owners came and just had a big fit about it. And that was the end of that. Well, after that, about every month or two, she'd get loose again. She'd come right back, and her and Nelson would play all day long, and then they'd either come and get her, or she'd eventually go home at night. So I hadn't seen her for about, I don't know, several months, because they keep her in a dog run now, so she won't get out because she's always coming down to see Nelson. <laughs> but somehow she got out, and she was there Monday, I think it was. And uh, she came to see Nelson. But of course, Nelson's, he's there, but he's, his body's there, buried in the, clear in the back there by the garden. And Nelson died, and he went away. But you know, that dog, she peed on every bush in the place, so that it's like, in case he comes back, he'll know I was here. You know, I mean, that's what they do. And she was kind of like leaving uh, a card saying, where were you? I was here, and you didn't show up, you know. But, and then she, she wanted to play with me. She'd come up, and every once in a while, she'd come running up, and she'd jump up at me, not, you know, not viciously, but just wanting to play the way she always did with Nelson. And she followed me around, and every time I stopped, because I was burning limbs and stuff, I'd cut down a bunch of trees earlier, and I'd just mowed that day, I think. But anyway, and she'd come up, and I'd, I'd go to turn around, she'd be right there. I couldn't even turn around without tripping over, you know. She just wanted to be there. She followed me around, she'd chase after and run and go over by the kids, and she just, it was like, she was just reliving this thing. And so, what I'm saying, I know this sounds crazy, but see, to her, Nelson still lived because of us. So she was living out that loss by being with who she knew were Nelson's closest yep. family, whatever you want to call it. Yep. So I just loved her. I played with her. Sally did. We just, you know, hugged her. We, we fed her. We gave her water. She hung around all day. Till she laid under the, laid where they always laid, underneath the crab apple tree. Then she went over and laid where he always laid over in the mulch by the uh, between the decks. Then she ended up finally up on the deck itself, just laying there, like she's waiting something's gonna happen, you know. So we we were trying to show her that Nelson is still here. He's just not here in the flesh. He's still here. We we're gonna love you. We're gonna treat you the way he did when he was here. Now I know this sounds crazy, but this what God was saying to me. So we showed her that Nelson still exists, but not in a body, not in his body. And so she was up there on the deck like she belonged there. And my point in this story is not to see if I can keep myself from crying, but that's what we do for people that are looking for Jesus.
we show that he's not dead. Amen. He's alive in us. Absolutely. Amen. That might sound like a corny analogy, but if we can do that for a dog, how deep should our feelings be for people that are going through their life looking for this connection? for this bond and we've got it it would have been like us to just throw rocks at Angel when she come into the yard get out of here you but you don't belong to us but see for us it was also a reconnection with Nelson so when we do this that's what Jesus was talking about here you love one another and you show that I'm still living that I'm still alive, that I'm still real. Yeah. And you make him real to them. And he becomes more real to you in the process. Yeah. I'll give you Barry Siegel's word for the week. Nek hama. Comfort. Comfort one another, he said. Amen. So, Amen. that's what I want this church to be. That's why I'm, I'm wanting to change things up. It isn't about correcting anybody but me. It's about, I, I want us to love people. I want us to love one another in spite of us. Because I got to tell you, Nelson had some stuff that wasn't great. He, he, he loved human food, although I fed him good quality dog food, like to the tune of 50 bucks a week. But, yeah. but he loved human food, especially ribs. It's <laughs> <laughs> a rib that, but it had a side effect. Yeah. <laughs> and as he got older, we kept him in the house at night. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, and he'd usually sit right next to Sally's chair because I'd go upstairs. I'd learned long ago that that's not the place you want to be after ribs. <laughs> but we loved him anyway. We loved him even if he smelled a little at times, you know, even if he wasn't perfect. He was perfect to us. That's how we got to see people. That's how we have to deal with people, with each other, because that sends a bigger signal to people outside of us. You know, it's one thing to, to have a missionary kind of attitude and you're reaching out to people, but you can't get along with the person next to you. we got to learn to love each other and then to love others. Amen. And I'm telling you, if we'll do that, Jesus will show up. Amen. People will experience him. Amen. And that's what God wants more than anything else, is to be known so that he can comfort, so that he can give love, so that he can interact. And that's what this is all about. If it was anything else, I'd have quit and gone back to doing something else a long time ago. But a lot of times we don't even know what it is the next thing God's wanting to do in our lives. He's just trying to get us to a place where he can do it. And I believe that's where this church is now. I believe that's the beginning of what God wants to do in 2017. 2017, I think, is a breakthrough year. I do believe God wants oh. to do something very unique with this church. But it's not the end of what God's going to do. It's just the thing that will open up everything he does want to do. <coughs> so with that in mind, I'm not going to keep you because I did tell you I'd get you out of here early. So I apologize for the personal uh, note here tonight. But I do feel like God did speak to me. This dog was a great dog. I miss him every day. He was a dog. But he's still alive. And I'm just waiting for Angel to come back and visit again. Praise the Lord. So let's have that attitude for one another and for the lost. Let's stay sensitive. So the next time we have a visitor, we can love them the way Jesus would love them. Amen. Let them know we've got something to give you. And it's our Heavenly Father, our big brother, our Jesus who went away. But he's still here. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen.
Praise God. All right. God bless all of you. Appreciate it so much. Let's continue to pray for the women's conference and just believe that God's going to do something supernatural in all of their lives. Amen. God bless you all. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.